Did you ever wonder what farms do with animals who outlive their purpose or don't hold up their end of the bargain? I want to show you what we do on our farm. Look at these guys, they're getting big. They're getting big. Got a couple more weeks before our processing. This will be the last batch for us for 2024. You guys are getting big, looking good. Hey babe. Hey babe. I haven't seen you yet this morning. about time to move you still loving this tractor I am I'm still loving this tractor I just I love to be able to see all the way through and when I'm moving it and so I know if I catch a bird by mistake I can adjust it real quick Anything, now that you've used it for quite a while, is there anything you'd do different about the whole setup? This particular tractor? Um, yeah, there's, on the inside here, on the inside here. Oh, uh -oh. <laughs> so, the chicken wire doesn't come all the way across, so it kind of hangs down so when I step in there I'm always catching my hat or hitting my head or getting caught on it so I would put something wait we got escape chickens yeah <laughs> hold on hold on it'll be okay I don't I don't quit it anymore no do they go back in yeah, yeah you lost once I start feeding oh they yeah. get crazy okay yeah, I'll I just don't. I'll just let you talk then yeah <laughs> so, so what are you saying I'm this sorry stuff, this stuff this chicken wire hangs down yeah so it kind of narrows the walkway in here. So I need to put a couple bars or something here that kind of holds it out. Because yeah, we just felt, we just went along, uh, did the original design that we got from the book, right? Yeah, yeah, which yeah. is which is fine. It's just, uh, and we want to keep it as lightweight as possible. But I, I think, you know, some one by one strap uh, wood or something like that, another okay. pole. They're getting pretty big. Yeah. Considering they still got two more weeks, they're pretty big. Yeah, they are. They are. Okay, you guys coming back in? Yeah, they'll come back in. <laughs> Matt, I'll, I'll get them. They're easy. They don't run very fast. No, they don't. They just, oh. They just See, this is where some people put baby gates right there. Yeah. Where, you know, you can step over. But watch how I, watch how I get these guys. I just moved you to some good hunting ground here. Oh, it was like, ooh, ooh. Okay. Ooh, ooh. This guy is always getting out. He's going first. <laughs> He's on here. So we're having problems with the egg layers, aren't we? Yeah, we've had some problems with them for a little while now, and we're not sure exactly uh, why. We've had problems. We thought maybe the chickens were being just totally rebellious and laying out in the tree line somewhere or along the fence lines where the grass has grown up. But I have searched and searched and traveled far and wide, and I can't find any eggs just some big nest somewhere out there. So they've stopped laying. Now we think it's feed. Maybe they're not getting enough feed out there. And as temperatures are starting to change, as we move into fall and winter, less bugs, the grass, the pasture out there where they're on is actually still really good, but there's less bugs out there. And this was happening way before the daylight hours. It hours was. It was usually, it was happening during midsummer. Yeah, because usually it's when there's not enough daylight they're laying those down. Right. Right. 
So I don't, I don't understand. With plenty of daylight hours, direct sun, you know, warm enough, too warm. Temperature is not sure exactly uh, what that's all about. Can you hand me that bucket right there? Yes. So the last, the last thing we're trying okay. is changing their feet up. Changing their feet. Um, I'm, we've usually got crumbles out there, but I've added some cracked corn and I've added a scratch feed as well. So it's got different types of nuts and stuff in there and seeds. And then also I bought a block where they can scratch at it and it'll last for a month or something like that. Yeah, hopefully so it'll give them more protein. And hopefully yeah. more protein. I think we need to start maybe diverting some of the kitchen scraps that go to the pigs, maybe to the chickens. Okay. And see if that helps. Yeah. All right, well, I won't bug you anymore, but I just wanted you to talk about that a little bit. Thank you, dear. Have yeah. fun. Yeah, thank you. And how much longer do the meat birds have? Well, depending on how this cold snap affects them, either we can start processing a week from now or the week after that. So it, they're super close. This is how my week's been going. <laughs> so I turned on my milk machine yesterday and tried to adjust the pressure and the knob came off. So I'm gonna have to hand milk today, which is fine, especially because now that Maple and Sassy are bred, they're carrying babies, their milk production has dropped. So <laughs> it's fine, but it's not fine that this broke off. So I'm gonna have to call Simple Pulse and they will probably make it right because they are just like that. So. Anyway, let me go get these girls and get started. So Maple is probably bred her milk production has definitely dropped. Prince, I did something different with Prince, our buck this year. Instead of bringing the girls over when we saw them in heat, we decided that Prince should just live with the girls. I left him in there about a month. And now he and his son are back in the buck area. And the girls, I think they're bred. Like I said, maple shows signs of being bred because her milk has dropped, her milk production has dropped and she hasn't shown any other signs of going back into heat. Now, if I really wanted to be sure, I could draw some blood and send it off. I'm not sure I want to do that right yet. I'm just going to keep watching. I may eventually do that, but I've got four goats. Now this girl is a trick. Get back up, get back up. This is Sassy. This is Maple's daughter. And she, she is a first freshener. So this is her first year actually having babies. And if you've been following along, she has had her own set of challenges this year. within a day and a half of having her kids she got backed up so we had to treat her for congested udder and then a month later to my fault she wound up getting mastitis that went gangrene and we were able to save her from that before it got too far gone so that was so exciting and so much hard work however check out what she's been doing What is wrong with this pitcher? Lots of milk, no milk. How on earth am I supposed to stop her from self-nursing? Yes, you heard me right. She's nursing on herself. I have tried taping her and 
she just sucks right through the tape. I don't want to put a plastic tape on because it, her skin needs to breathe and that would cause an infection if I just left it on there. So I have reached out to friends and one of two things I need to try next, either a spray called Bitter Apple or I'm going to have to get one of those cones of shame, do you know what I'm talking about, that the dogs have, and put it on but in reverse because if I put it on the way the dogs have it, I'm not sure if she could graze on the ground. So yeah, yeah, this one's always something. She got a little bit on the side. Not much, but a little. Now, why do we make such a big deal out of stuff like this? I tell you that having a farm or a homestead or whatever you want to call it, raising your own food and keeping animals for that purpose definitely changes your relationship with food and with animals. Now, don't get me wrong, I am an animal lover, always have been, and I still love our animals, but there's definitely a difference between livestock and pets. David and I made an agreement, especially because we're operating on a limited budget, that every animal here has a function and a purpose. And because of that, when somebody's not doing their job, it causes a problem, and we need to fix the problem. Right, Sassy? So, Sassy, we need to fix the problem. Miss Maple is actually, oh yes, yeah, Sophie. Even Sophie has a job, right? Sophie, your job's to protect, you do, and keep your company, and you do a really good job. And then there's Miss Maple, and Maple actually, she is the best goat I have, by far. She knows her name, she's a good milk producer, and her peak, she can give me almost two gallons a day. Um, her structure for as milking is her teats are easy to handle, and <laughs> what are you doing? And, uh, and Maple, she's just a good girl. She's just got a good temperament and good structure for kidding. She just never gives me any trouble. She's super healthy, very parasite resistant, and she's exactly what I want in all of my goats. Huh, yes. Sophie, Sophie, you're overwhelming me. You're overwhelming me with your love. Sassy, let me see your face. Look at this. Gosh, girl. Can you be more like your mom? Huh? No? Sassy. Finley, Finley, we're giving her a bye. She miscarried for her first kidding season. And I know that she's gonna make some really beautiful babies. She's got really good confirmation. And so I'm looking forward to seeing what she gives us. And I know she's gonna be a good milk producer because of the line that she comes from. So we're willing to, we're willing to bite the bullet, yes and feed you for an extra year to get that from you. Yes. She loves to be loved too. She follows me around to be loved, huh? Yeah. So this is Strawberry who we bought this year to be an additional milker, but she had some issues with subclinical mastitis. So we got her better and dried her off and we'll start fresh next spring. So she's another one that we're holding on to because of the promise of how much milk she's gonna give us. You see, she's Maple's granddaughter so she carries the genetics of giving us lots of good milk. Yeah, so we only have our four girls. Finley, Sassy, Miss Lumpy Face, hi. I know. And Maple and Strawberry. But they all have a purpose and we'll wind up selling their kids next year. And that will help supplement their feed and their hay for next year as well. Right, Maple? So the pasture has definitely died back. You can definitely tell that autumn is here. And in Tennessee, we get like rounds of autumn with summer mixed in before it's finally really autumn. <laughs> so 
week before last it was really warm and it cooled down and I was grateful because our grandkids from New Mexico came to visit with my daughter and her husband and that was amazing and the temperature was just right and the temperatures are supposed to go back up not exponentially but it'll warm up to be almost like a summer day here I believe next week so another farm animal we have that is worth its weight in gold is our barn cat actually we have three of them and this is the youngest baby Santa the grandkids named her when they were out here she didn't have a name for the longest time but she is so sweet yes and she and her mom and our other cat Charlotte are worth their weight in gold they make sure that pests are not getting in and eating all of the feed that we have and, and making our animals sick. Super grateful for our barn cats. why we don't leave a whole lot of sentimentality with the animals meaning keeping animals that don't contribute to our food bill or to our food stash um, is being a good steward of the finances that we have doing our best with the finances we have to create food that is good and wholesome not only for ourselves but for those around us so therefore when we have an animal that's not doing what it's supposed to do we have to find a new home for it, or a new job for it, something. <laughs> or it has to go in the freezer, honestly. So bottom line with Sassy, if I can't break her of self-nursing, I don't want her around. I'm thankful for her and the milk she supplied, has supplied us with so far, but she's taking half my stash every day. So I'm gonna have to try to sell her with full disclosure that that's what she's doing, and they can either make the decision to try and break her, or use her as just somebody who clears weeds. Likewise, with the chickens, we've got to come up with a system, and it probably won't be until spring now, to find out who's laying and who's not laying. I know, I've looked at all the wives' tales online, and they're not 100% foolproof. The only way to be foolproof is to take them individually, lock them in an area, and see if they're actually laying. So we'll probably do that with two or three chickens at a time and find out who the culprits are. The ones that are not laying, we'll probably go in with our our meat chickens and they will be put in the freezer. So why do we even bother with all of this? I mean, there always seems to be some troubleshooting that needs to happen, which is fine. And it actually keeps things a little interesting. The bottom line is we're trying to eat healthier, or that was the main focus when we moved here, is to grow our own food so we know the source that it came from and to be healthy. We started this journey probably about 12 years ago, honestly. and each year we've strived to do more and more in the direction of good health for us because I want to talk to you about something. You don't have to live this lifestyle to eat healthy. I also want to encourage you with the fact that I believe it's our God-given responsibility to take care of our bodies and to feed ourselves well. It does not mean you need a homestead or a farm. It just means you need to seek out the best quality food that you can afford and do the best you can. The scriptures talk about our bodies being a temple of God. Well, how much effort do we put into taking care of our church building? Why would we not take care of this, the dwelling of the Spirit's building? Right? Why would we not take care of where the Spirit dwells in our bodies? And God has asked us to, to be good stewards over everything that we have and we are. And our body is the number one thing. So our conviction, or at least my conviction in David's, the children are growing in their own convictions on this, is that we need to do the best we can to take care of the body that God gave us so that we can serve others. Eat healthy food. 
It doesn't necessarily need to be organic. If you can afford organic, that's great. I know it stops a lot of people from eating healthy because they think, oh, junky food is cheaper. I guess in one way it is, but what it costs you at the end of the, time, end of the day is your health. And is that really gonna be, be more affordable? Um, I know for me, I have changed the way I've eaten, and even though I have been diagnosed as arthritic, when I eat a certain way, I do not struggle with arthritis. It is hugely a sacrifice to turn away from the food that this world has to offer now that, honestly, I'm not even really sure if it's truly food. It's a hodgepodge of chemicals put together to taste good, and they say that it's not bad for us. But based on all the health issues, the increase in obesity, and everything else that I see going on around us in the United States, I beg to differ. Did you know that 20% of the children in the U.S. are classified as obese? I don't remember that being that way when I was a kid. Actually, I think as of 30 years ago, it was more like 5%. So what's going on? And it's not just the young people. As we get older, we have a responsibility to set the example for the young people. And also, we're not done yet. Our time here on Earth is not done, therefore we're not done. And it's just it's so much more enjoyable to be able to move around and do things, the healthier you can be. Now granted, I know that there are some health issues that some people struggle with. And there's nothing you can do about it. I get that. But putting yourself in the most optimal position you can to take care of yourself, I think that's what we're striving for here. Guys, I'm not saying we're perfect at it. I'm not saying that we don't occasionally eat junk. What I am saying is I wanna encourage you to do your best to eat as healthy and live as healthily as you can. Now look, I'm not saying that legitimately we're gonna get sick or that by eating healthy we're gonna avoid getting sick. What I am saying is you give yourself the best possible chance to take care of yourself to the best of your ability. We've been doing damage to our bodies for many years and with this food and how it's gradually gotten worse and worse. And if that's so, it's gonna take time to heal. The other thing is just by giving God glory through eating like we do everything else. So yeah, whatever you do in word and deed, do it all in the, for the glory of God. That would include eating. So start, I would, I would totally recommend starting by getting rid of sugar in your diet. It is the most addictive substance and the most harmful substance to you. And I don't know if you're aware of this, cancer feeds on sugar. So if you deprive your body of sugar, you will also have a very good chance of circumventing cancer. So guys, I wish the best for you and good luck on your journey. And if you're interested in hearing more content like today, Go ahead, like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Okay, so the white head duck right there. That's her with her one, two, three, four, five. Oh, oh there's number six. There's number six over there. He's distanced, distanced himself. There's the daddy duck, and there are the three other females that did not lay for me today. Excuse me. Hello. Sir, that's my foot. Thank you.